Hey, Layla. Not now, Leo. I need to be alone. Okay, but I just want you to know that I think it's really great what you did today. Mom told me how you stood up for Haley Johnson. I can't believe anyone would- I know. Haley is just a little different. We're all different in our own ways. And I've known Haley since second grade, and so have the kids who were making fun of her. And it wasn't funny that her wheelchair got knocked over and she fell on the floor. She needed help. What happened at lunch? Mom told me you got into a fight. Yeah, a group of boys were reenacting what happened to Haley, and some of my friends were laughing and joining in. I yelled at the boys, then my friends, pretty loud, and an assistant principal had to break it up. That's why Mom got called. Did you punch anyone? No, but I wanted to. The boy who started it all really deserved it, but I don't like violence. Thanks for supporting me, Leo. None of my friends do. Maybe you need to find new friends. I might have to. No one's responding to my texts. People are making fun of me now, calling me Ragela. <sighs> I feel this really weird mix of mad, sad, and scared. Maybe I should have just stayed quiet and stayed out of it. Oh man, it's time. Where's your phone? Time for what? Time to visit Martin Luther King. I've really been wanting to meet him. He's like the king. Get it? Yeah, I get it. The king of standing up for what's right. Let's go talk to him. Okay, if anybody can help, it'll be him. We as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight, I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Whoa, that's him all right. This was a good idea. Let's go meet him. Excuse us, Dr. King. I'm Layla, and this is my brother, Leo. We're from the future, and my sister here stood up for what's right. Because her friends are being mean about it, she isn't sure if she should have. We have a holiday for you and learn about your I Have a Dream speech every year. You're famous for standing up for what's right, and it would be cool to learn more about that from you. Do you have a little time? I can always make time for those who stand up to injustice and who have the courage to right wrongs. Have you always stood up for what's right? Well, from a very early age, I was aware of right and wrong. And when I detected wrong, it gave me a horrible feeling. As a young boy, perhaps just a few years younger than you, Leo, my favorite playmate was a boy near my age who also happened to be white. Once we started school because of my skin color, he was no longer allowed to play with me. That's terrible. It was, and unfair to me, and it made me angry. But my parents gave me a lesson that has guided me for the rest of my life. They taught me that racism, thinking people are better than or lesser than because of skin color, is wrong. And to hate the wrong, but never the wrongdoer. Wow, that's so noble. My Christian faith directs me to love my neighbors, even when they act in ways I don't like. And that's always helped me remain peaceful. You've experienced lots of racism, huh? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, in my time, there are plenty of hateful and ignorant people that haven't let go of racism. So most black Americans have experienced it, but here in 1968 in the South, it has been particularly difficult for black people because of legal racial segregation. That's when people are separated because of their race, right? Yes, that's it. And while the defeat of the South in the Civil War led to the outlawing of slavery, racism, however, still remained. And new laws were made to keep white and black people separate. Didn't people fight against the new laws? Yes, but in 1896, the Supreme Court ruled that segregation was indeed permitted. They said things like schools, swimming pools, bathrooms, movie theaters, and such could be separate for white only or black only, as long as they were equal. But if people are kept separate, isn't it harder to learn that racism is bad? So the bad behavior just continues? That's very insightful of you, Miss Layla, and I couldn't agree more with you. When I was a young man, I spent time working in desegregated Connecticut and went to college in desegregated Massachusetts. In each place, the races mixed freely, and without segregation, it is much easier to have friendships and relationships with people of different races. Wait, so in the South, if there was still a lot of racism, 
Were the things that were separate ever really equal? Almost never. And not just unequal, but most black-only services were far worse than their white counterpart. However, one place where the races couldn't be separated was on public transportation. Cities in the South didn't have the money for two sets of buses, so whites and blacks had to mix. Sort of. Ugh, this isn't gonna be good. Blacks in the back and whites in the front. And blacks were only permitted to sit if there were extra seats after white passengers were all seated. But what about Rosa Parks? She didn't give up her seat. That's right, Mr. Leo. I'm pleased that future children remember that. Rosa was a good friend of mine in Montgomery, Alabama, where I had my first job as a pastor. And after she was arrested for refusing to give up her seat, I organized the black community and led a boycott, where we all agreed not to take the bus until the laws were changed and we received justice. You stood up for what's right. And it was very difficult. During our organized protest, I even spent time in jail after being unfairly arrested, and my home was bombed. What? Yes, thankfully no one was harmed. Through it all, though, our protests remain peaceful. I believe with all my heart in nonviolence. Two wrongs never make a right, and you can never defeat hate with hate. I guess it's good you didn't punch those bullies. No kidding, but I did yell at them. Sometimes a situation requires us to passionately raise our voices. <laughs> you should hear some of my speeches. We have! They're great! If your conscience tells you to apologize for yelling, then listen to it. But perhaps those bullies required some amplified volume. As long as you didn't threaten or insult them, I wouldn't feel too bad. Thanks, Dr. King. One great secret about using nonviolence to fight back is that by taking the high road and not sinking to the level of people who are being mean, you can actually make a bigger impact on them than with a violent act like a punch. I wasn't mean to my friends who laughed and went along with the bullying. I just said I was shocked and disappointed that they could be so cruel. I kind of took the high road. Do you think that's why they won't talk to me? I do. And since you did the right thing and they didn't, they might be struggling with some disappointment in themselves. Don't worry, Miss Layla. If they're the kind of friends who are worth having, they'll be back after they've reflected on their actions and let go of their pride enough to apologize. Oh, tell us about the I Have a Dream speech. My teacher played it for us last Martin Luther King Day, and oh, man, you gave me chills, Dr. King. So, after the successful Montgomery bus boycott, I got to be pretty well known, and for years I traveled through the South and led movements against racial injustices. In response, I was wrongfully put in prison many times and even stabbed once. My goodness. But my belief in nonviolence never changed, and this led to some positive outcomes. All our different protests in all the different places became known as the Civil Rights Movement, and along the way I became its most famous leader. On August 28, 1963, others and I held the March on Washington for jobs and freedom, and more than a quarter million people of all races came to hear me give the I Have a Dream speech. Hmm, I wonder why our time machine didn't take us there to hear your big speech. Some of those lines are famous. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I'm glad those words are remembered. Perhaps in many ways, that famous moment was just the beginning. A lot has happened in the five years since that day, and I've learned much more about the need to continue taking action to right wrongs. Did the I Have a Dream speech not have as much impact as you hoped? Oh, it was a huge success. That speech caught the eye of not just the country, but the world. Other civil rights leaders and I were invited to visit the White House and speak with President John F. Kennedy. We set the stage for laws to be passed called the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and 65, which banned legal segregation, outlawed discrimination based on race, and made voting possible for every legal citizen. Since you got those laws passed, why do you still need to be out here giving speeches? Because in the years since, I've learned that there is much work that still needs to be done. There is far more injustice in the world than I once even realized and I can provide a voice for the voiceless. Dr. King, do you really think you need to fight all those fights? Thanks to my fame and notoriety, when I speak, many people hear my voice, and I feel I would be a hypocrite if I only acted to fix the problems in my own backyard. I do plan on slowing down to spend some time with my family, 
But there's still a lot of work for me to do. Thanks to talking to you, I'm really glad I did what was right and stood up for Haley. Telling bullies to knock it off and my friends to be nice isn't a big deal like what you do, Dr. King. But I know I'd feel so terrible if I stayed quiet. I'm glad to hear that, Miss Layla. But know that whether an injustice affects just a handful of people or millions, this world needs brave people like yourself to act peacefully and stand up against them. Thank you, sir. Feel better? Lots. On tough days, remember, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. And I see you kids shining. Now get on home. Okay. Bye, Dr. King. Thanks for being an inspiration to me and to the whole country. Hey. Things better at school? So good. I got called into the principal's office and thought I was in trouble, but Haley Johnson was in there too. We're going to lead a fundraiser that will add space to the areas of the school where it's a tough fit for Haley's wheelchair. And all my friends said they were sorry to Haley and asked her if they can help with the fundraiser. We start this weekend. All right. Can I help? Of course. Dr. King would be proud of you. I think so too. I miss him. So does our country. If you'd like to time travel with Leo and Layla again, please visit PragerUKids.com and watch more of their adventures.